Los Angeles, the city of angels. And this week it had biblical rainfall. They're calling it a historic storm, but in this town where Botox is more common than tap water, history isn't always pretty. From documenting hurricane force gusts and grapevines to historic rescues on the Ventura River, we drove down Laurel Canyon when it was more like Laurel Rapids. Myself and WX Chasing had a front row seat to history, a storm that I'll explain later had a much different impact than normal. Atmospheric rivers are long, narrow regions in the atmosphere that transport water vapor like a river in the sky from the tropics to the west coast. When the river makes landfall, all of that water vapor is released in the form of rain or snow. And as you can see from a satellite, they come in like a cyclone and can feel like one too. This is some of the strongest wind I've ever felt in California. This is a result of that very powerful atmospheric river that's coming ashore here in California, several parts of the state feeling hurricane force gusts like this. Of course, that's very dangerous with the power grid. These power poles are leaning back and forth. Nearby Interstate 5, semis at risk and high profile vehicles from flipping over with this very powerful wind as well. Cars dodging tumbleweeds, the least of the problems. This is a multifaceted storm. Not only this very strong wind in certain areas, but also several feet of snow in the mountains and the biggest impact likely, the rain. A lot of rain, several inches of rain coming with this atmospheric river in places like Los Angeles. These storms can be responsible for up to half of the West Coast's annual precipitation. This one just happened to dump several months worth in Southern California in a day. Ventura County got hit with the first flash flood warning. With rain like this, it doesn't take long for a nuisance to turn into a nightmare. A really incredible water rescue here in Ventura, California. This is the 101. You can see the flashing lights. That's the Ventura Fire Department. They have a ladder truck on the 101 blocking traffic as they used it to attach a firefighter, lower him down to the Ventura River. Apparently, according to fire officials, a homeless camper, someone who was camping along the Ventura River, was swept away as the river became really swollen with all of the rain that we've had here in Southern California so far from this atmospheric river event. So firefighters have responded. They've lowered him down by the ladder truck, given him a life vest, and now they're starting to lift him up out of the river to safety. A combination of a heavier band of rain that forced the drone down and an inconveniently parked fire truck made it impossible to actually film the part of the rescue, but it worked. And while the man was safe, we drove south to where conditions were getting more dangerous the hills around Los Angeles. The first major mud flow happened in Studio City. Brown water running down the street like a raging river is a bad sign. You can see amongst the boulders debris from homes above. With darkness and danger of further slides growing with each raindrop, Police closed access and evacuated more than a dozen residents from nine homes. Reports of damage to two homes, but hearing and seeing are two different things. It's terrifying when you see the just pure power and the force that this debris flow had as it crashed down from the hillside above this home, bringing with it boulders slamming through this home and then just creating chaos, crushing debris, things that were stored inside of this garage, and then pushing it downhill. You can see this car completely crushed from a column, and then several more cars pushed across the street, and the debris flowing downhill. It was like a raging river. These mountains used to actually be three times taller than they are now. Erosion, caused by forces like rain, have whittled the Santa Monica Mountains down to around one to 3,000 feet. The soil here has a limit, how much moisture it can take before it loosens. A foot of rain is well beyond that limit, and it became not if, but when and where another slide or debris flow would happen. You can see the do not cross, the tape up. This house is literally sitting on the edge of disaster. You can't see. It is very odd to look at a house. It looks like everything's normal, but right beneath it, the backyard is completely gone. It has been swept away, a landslide overnight the hillside collapsing. These mountains, the Santa Monica Mountains, very susceptible to this sort of erosion, especially when you have 
this type of head, heavy, moderate moisture, the ground is just completely saturated. And so there are several neighborhoods where mudslides and landslides have occurred and unfortunately causing a lot of damage and a lot of concern. People who live in this neighborhood know that this is a risk. It happens frequently, yes. It's, it's you know, I think just areas that there's not that much vegetation, it gets soaked like this, it just, she just goes. Now, do neighbors talk about this? Is this something that anybody here really is concerned about when they hear, all right, atmospheric rivers coming or like Hurricane Hillary coming? Like, is there, is this something people even talk about or is it like out of sight, out of mind? It's kind of out of sight, out of mind. A couple people in the neighborhood will, you know, they'll prep, put some sandbags out and, you know, do the right thing, get but, some waddles. But what can you prep with on this? Like, if an With entire... this amount of rain, you really can't prep for something like this. You can, you can put out waddles, hay waddles, sandbags here and there, but... I don't think anything is really going to prepare you for this amount. Public Works says there were around 120 mudslides and debris flows throughout the city. It damaged 25 structures. But in an unusual reverse of the greatest impacts we usually see in natural disasters, the city's wealthiest, not its poorest zip codes, were hit the hardest. Disaster even came to the 90210. A skid steer is being used to try and remove a literal mountain of mud that came down the hillside, boulders, mud, sometimes even landslides, entire backyards slipping down the mountainside. Numerous homes are impacted by this, people being evacuated, trying to find someplace else to stay while they can. We just saw it flood. Yeah? And then it started coming in and it started filling up on the door. Like the top house, the landslide just started coming down. Our, our three cars up there are buried in mud. Uh, was there any like warning or did it just happen? No, it like... just kind of started happening. I came home and saw it happening and I walked up this hill and the couple put of mud. While the LA River was raging with rainwater, we found very few roads that were the same. Stalled out cars sitting in flooded streets were the exception. I've been in places around the country that have seen months worth of rain in mere hours. Places like New York. even Miami. And here in Los Angeles, they've handled it better than anywhere else. After that deadly and devastating flood in 1938, the city straightened and put concrete in all of the city's streams and rivers with one mission, to move as much water as quickly as possible to the ocean. But there's a problem with this flood fixture, and that's the fact that this city is actually more well known for its lack of water, its droughts. That's why so many television shows and movies are actually filmed in the LA River and people are driving in it. The reality is only a small percentage of this water will be able to be captured for irrigation and drinking water. The vast majority of it just gets wasted out to sea. Something else to consider, despite those high rainfall totals, we never really had heavy rain. Most of it fell as light or moderate rainfall. We never saw the two to three inch per hour rainfall rates that can overwhelm nearly any wastewater system. So many beautiful homes here in Studio City, many protected behind gates like this, but you have to wonder how many are wondering, are they next? because what can you do to protect against nature? There's nothing really. Los Angeles has one of the most complicated relationships with water since it was founded. And this storm just added to that history. I'm Jonathan Petromala, an independent journalist and documentarian. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and liking this video. Also, let me know what you think in the comments.